Okay, so in this problem we're told a house at the bottom of a hill is fed by a full tank of water 50 meters deep and connected to the house by a pipe that is 110 meters long at an angle of 58 degrees from the horizontal. A. Determine the water gauge pressure at the house. B. How high could the water shoot if it came vertically out of a broken pipe in front of the house? So I went ahead and drew the figure here. So we know the pipe is going to be from here. It's going to go down like this, right? And it's going to connect here. And so what we're trying to find in A is the gauge pressure basically at the house. And so you can imagine it at this point. So keep in mind the, um, the right, so the pipe is going to basically go to the house. It's going to go from here up to here and then basically up to this surface at the top of this uh, well here. And so uh, let's go ahead and start with A. So we're going to be solving for the gauge pressure. And we know pressure, or the gauge pressure in this case, is equal to rho, which is the density of our liquid here, which in this case is water, multiplied by g, which is the acceleration due to gravity, and h, which is basically the vertical distance uh, from the free surface, which in this case, right, the free surface of the water is right here, right? So at the top of uh, this full tank of water. So that's what the h is. And so really, it's just a matter of plugging this stuff in. So rho is the density of water, and you should know the density of water, right? We'll call it rho w, is equal to 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So plugging that in, we have 1,000 multiplied by g, which is the acceleration due to gravity, uh, just the 9.8. It's a constant. And so as I said before, h is essentially uh, the distance from here all the way up to here. So the vertical distance from the uh, free free surface. So that's what we have to calculate. So how do we do that? So we know this distance is five meters and then we're going to need the rest of that distance. So basically from here to there. So basically we can find this distance right here. So if we can find out what this distance is here and then add it to five meters, that's going to be the total vertical distance or H, right? So this whole thing is H and that's what we want to find. So how do we find this right here? So we know that this angle of our incline here is 58 degrees. And so you want to imagine it like a triangle. So we're just going to use some basic trig. So like this, let me actually draw it nicer. So this is our triangle here. Keep in mind, this is going to be 90 degrees. So this is 90, this is 58 degrees. And we know this distance right here is this part on the triangle, which is 110. And so if we want to find what this is, we'll call it H. Or actually, let's not, we'll call it Y. Um, if we want to find Y, we're just going to use trig. So you would use the sine function. So you should know the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite side of the angle divided by the hypotenuse. So opposite is Y divided by 110. To solve for Y, you would just multiply both sides by 110, and then you get your Y. So this distance right there, right, we'll calculate it out, 110 times the sine of 58 degrees you get 93.285, uh, it's going to be in meters since this distance was in meters. And so now we know that this distance right here is 93.285. So our H, which is this total distance, would be this plus the 5, right? We have to add both. So uh, we would just plug it in there. So 93.285 plus 5, and that's your H. And so now it's just a matter of plugging in all the values. So let me go ahead and do that. So when you go ahead and do this, what you're going to find is the answer is, uh, right, so your pressure is 963195, or uh, we could just rewrite this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 9.6 times 10 to the 5. Uh, the newton or, or the units here are going to be newtons per meter squared so that's going to be your pressure so p is right here this is your answer to a so that's going to go ahead and be your answer uh, next what we're going to want to do is uh let's do b so for b uh, what they want us to find is how high could the water shoot if it came out vertically out of a broken pipe in front of the house so you can imagine it's going to come out here, 
All right, so let's say this is where the broken pipe is out of the house. And we're trying to figure out how high it's gonna go. And so essentially the rule here is, uh, if you use the conservation of energy, I'm not gonna go through uh, how to solve it, but I'll just explain the trick. So essentially how high it's gonna go up or how high it'll go out is equal to this H value. So whatever the height is, right, or the distance vertically from the free surface, right? So this was the free surface of the water, right? The point where it touches basically the air. Uh, that's how high it'll actually go up. So you basically, whenever that happens, you can just use that height and that's gonna be how high it would fall out. In real life, it actually wanna do that because of a multitude of factors. But in this problem, that's basically what they're looking for, right? So H in this case, or how high it'll go is just uh, this value right here. So 93.285, and then you would just add the, uh, right? Or 93.285 plus the five, so you have to add them. And so when you do that, you would get, right, 93, that would be 98.285. So about 98.3, you can round up however you'd like. Obviously, this is in meters since we're dealing with height here. Uh, but yeah, so just know it's equal to uh, the distance or the height from the free surface, whatever you used in your pressure formula, uh, that's how high it'll go. So uh, your answer here is 92.3 meters. And uh, yeah, so this is your answer to A, this is your answer to B. And uh, yeah, just a matter of plugging in these formulas, understanding what they are. And then for this, you just kind of know that trick. Uh, but yeah, so these are gonna be your answers and hopefully you found this video useful.